when you write a cookbook, you uh, make a uh, you you take it out of your experience. And stevia is not a sugar. Stevia is a natural sweetener. It's in the family of licorice. And it's something that actually helps you if you have diabetes. If you have cancer, you can use it. And it's very sweet. If you ever drank wheatgrass, it's kind of like wheatgrass sweet. So you don't me need much anyway. And olive oil is, yes, we have, if you look at our condiment table at the Institute, we have olive oil and hemp oil. And we have... Uh, like Bragg's, we have Nama Shoyu, because a lot of people are in the... Uh, Pizza pie month. Yeah, yeah, no, transition <laughs> time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, so, th so th th we don't want to take everything away. We don't use much of anything on our salad because we've been eating it so long, but most people need something on top. And, of course, our olive oil, we find the most... Um, First press, organic, uh, of course, it's, uh, it's very good. I don't want my salad to swim in it, but if I have, for example, a mister and I spray my salad with that, that is fine because I'm not eating any animal products. I'm not getting that kind of trans fats. So a little bit of that fat that I get there together with a big salad of sprouts and maybe I have some nuts or seeds and I, or I have avocado, that is fine. So uh, we don't want you to be, go out of here and be hysteric, like there's no <laughs> oils that we can use, there's no fruit that you can use. No, I mean, it's uh, absolutely every, every person that comes to us, for example, get an individual program and it depends on where we're at. So we looked at all those things making this book. Now, where, where do you hear it has no minerals? Yeah, this is cold press. Yeah. Well, sure, it's alive. I mean, yes. raw raw olive oil is alive. Fat? Sure, it's a fat. It has a very Just very small fat? amount of saturated fat. It's a monounsaturate. Meaning that why you see it get solid at 32 and at 33 get loosened up, that's a sign of a monounsaturate. So it doesn't clog up our <coughs> vessels, our, our blood vessels? No, look at, I mean, probably, and you can speak to the research even more than I do. I've read it a million times, but look at the Mediterranean diet. One of the reasons they keep saying, hey, those people live longer in southern Italy than they do in Greece than anywhere else, is they attribute that in great part to the benefit they're getting from I'm not sure that's all true. I don't think they eat a lot of meat. They don't eat, that's really it. But the fact is, olive oil is not a problem for you. So now, here's, let me say this. You may be alluding Dr. Esselstyn, who I love and respect. Remember, he comes through the window, thank God, of cardiovascular disease. And so when you have cardiovascular disease, I would tell you, please don't eat any oil and any of that stuff for a period of time. And so that I agree with. But again, the real problem we have, you don't take any oil, you don't eat foods like sprouts all the time, and not everyone does. You know, you're going to end up with dementia, you're going to end up with problems in the future. Uh, one of the difficulties we have eating healthy diets, if they're not really comprehensively healthy, is we end up with a lack of essential fats, and that's a problem, that's a problem. And I grew up in, uh, here in the New York area, a lot of Italian friends. I grew up eating a lot of olive oil. I happen to prefer olive oil. Is it as good as some of the other oils? No. I don't like to taste the hemp oil. I just don't like the taste of it. It's much better for you, but it's not chia oil. If you can find it, great oil. But the fact of the matter is, where we're not extreme, as Anna Marie says, you've got to make bridges sometimes. And if you don't make bridges, now, we individualize. You have a heart attack, don't take oil for a bit. Not forever, for a bit. Thank you. Uh, kind of a two-part question. If you could address the healing concept of um, seeded versus unseeded fruits and vegetables. And number two, maybe um, just kind of a quick synopsis of the philosophical differences between Hippocrates and natural hygiene. Thank you. Why don't you go on that? Too. Seeded. Seeded. No, I'll do the Hippocrates part. The seeded, seeded versus unseeded. Yeah. 
I mean, I guess the seeded versus unseeded. I mean, all, all I mean, fruits have seeds. They should have all seeds. have seeds. They should, um, they should have seeds. If, if you're thinking <laughs> about the ones that you would actually eat the seeds versus the ones that the seeds are, you know, you don't eat the pit of a peach or a plum uh, versus a raspberry or something like that where you're actually eating the seeds. Uh, obviously, in, in when you're eating fruits with these that have a lot of small little seeds, the seeds have a lot of value, a lot of fiber and, and, and also some phytochemicals and quite often even more concentrated in those than some of the flesh. But I definitely am not an expert on that. No, either not. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's a good question, though. Uh, w w the only thing I can add to that is that when, when the berry thing came up and my colleagues from Tufts said, this is great for the brain, it's great for the heart, it's great for everything, uh, around the same time, Canadians got a hold of me, young, young, like 20-year-old Canadians, and they said, would you like to buy the seeds of blueberries? Uh, you know, as much as you think, you know, I was like shocked that you could buy the seeds of blueberries. And I said, why not? And so, of course, we now, cranberry seeds have the most antioxidant effect of any seed. As a matter of fact, it's loaded with vitamin D. There's a great product on the market now for vitamin D. The main ingredient is the oil from cranberry seeds. Uh, black raspberry seeds. Much better, by the way. These are 40, 50, 60 times better, more beneficial than the blackberry itself, which is noted for the brain building, cardiovascular building, uh, blueberries, etc. And again, you know, Stephen, who I've known for 25, 30 years, every season he, he keeps. Now, what about the blueberries? He's asked me that question about a million times. You know, I tell him, look at, I eat blueberries too. And if you can pick pick blueberries or go to Maine here or no, in Europe, blueberries. Knock yourself out, providing you're not sick. Now, natural hygiene was a movement that began in the 19th century in Europe. And I think it was a pretty interesting movement because it was a time that the Industrial Revolution came up and people were starting to leave the land rather than stay on the land. And they said, you know, we want to eat very pure. Uh, Arnold Errett indirectly was part of that, one of the great leaders in the very initial programs of vegan diets and mucusless dying diet healing system and then you had the next generation that came um, from all over the world and my my hero it's interesting because i met a doctor recently and we both fell in love with this man and that's why both of us got into this work paul bragg you know what he did just an enormous extraordinary character that was committed to people being healthy and then you, Jack LaLanne was actually because of Paul Bragg, he came back to health. So, you know, we get a lot of credit. We're sort of, this is easy for us compared to that. So I give an ama amazing amount of respect for natural hygiene. I think that probably some of the blueprints of Hippocrates came out of that. And we then moved into modern times. And we realized when you, in the 1800s, had your own farm and the neighbor had a farm and you were eating fresh, organic, raw food, off that, off that farm, it was incredibly nourishing. If you ever went to a garden or a farm and picked something, and washed it and ate it, you know what I mean. But that's not who we are anymore. You know, I was stunned. I was in California lecturing a number of years ago, and I mentioned something. We must be getting this you know, food from California on the East Coast. A week later, and a guy stood up who was a truck driver. His whole family was on the Hippocrates program. His wife had healed cancer on the Hippocrates program and said to me, I don't want to criticize you, but you're wrong. We have nitrogen in the trailers, and it could be up to five weeks before you get the food on your table. What nutrition is in there? So Ann Wigmore, with her wisdom, certainly not me. I can't take credit for this. New sprouts were good. We didn't have any science. I shouldn't say any. There was virtually no science at that point on it. Now we have overwhelming science on that. Overwhelming science on sprouts. Uh, just today I mentioned the Iranians gave a science on sunflower green. There was no such thing as a sunflower green sprout eaten in any culture. Our co-founder, Victorus Kovinskis, brought that to the world. I said, how do you invent that? He said, I had a big bag of rotting sunflower. I threw it on the compost pile. It grew and I tested it. <laughs> so some of these things are good mistakes sometimes. That's how they come about. So, so you know, you can't survive on the classic, traditional, natural hygiene diet. You can't survive on the classic, traditional, macrobiotic diet. 
And, you know, that's how it goes today. So sometimes we grow beyond th certain things.